I want to present to you some of the work towards knowledge equity that I'm working now on the Wiki, at the Wikimedia Foundation. That's not all the knowledge equity work um, for the foundation. The foundation, it's, it's uh, knowledge equity is really one of the main programmatic goals for 2030. So we're doing a lot of things towards it. What I will talk about today is where Wikipedia is, about Wikidata, about apps at Wikipedia and Wikifunctions. I have joined the Wikimedia Foundation last summer. I'm talking about this echo right now. Okay, so I've joined the Wikimedia Foundation last summer to work on apps Wikipedia and Wikifunctions. The mission of the Wikimedia Foundation is a world where everyone can share in the sum of all knowledge. How are we doing with that? Well, Wikipedia is celebrating 20th anniversary this year. So we are with regards to the goal of giving everyone access to the, uh, to the sum of all knowledge. We support more than 300 languages and we offer more than 50 million encyclopedic articles in those languages. Doesn't sound too bad, right? But the knowledge we offer is very unevenly distributed. In English, we have more than 6 million articles, which is rough comprehensive, but in Amharic, a language with 20 million native speakers, fewer than 15,000. But that's not just that, you know, even in English, we are missing a lot of knowledge. If these are the six million articles in English, German, the second most active Wikipedia, has articles on two and a half million topics. But only about half of those topics are also covered by the English Wikipedia. So there's a lot of knowledge. This is not available in English, which is available in German. In fact, even Amharic has articles and topics that are missing from the English Wikipedia, such as this article about Quanta Thurtho, which is an Ethiopian dish. Of the 20 million topics that have Wikipedia articles, only one third are covered by the English Wikipedia, much fewer by the other languages. But looking just at the number of articles paints a grossly oversimplified picture. The English article about Marie Curie is as long as an essay. It has more than 115,000 characters. In Amharic, it's one sentence. So we have fallen on our mission of allowing everyone to share the sum of our knowledge. Not because we don't have the knowledge, but because we don't allow for an equitable access to it. There are all these language barriers between. The fundamental problem is that all the articles in Wikipedia are written and maintained independently in each language. This leads to the cost of Wikipedia being the number of topics we want to cover, times the number of languages we want to support. And this is a very big number. I want to show you an architecture that allows us to turn this multiplication into an addition, and therefore reducing the cost of creating and maintaining Wikipedia by two orders of magnitude, which would be a space that the community can work with. And in fact, for the last few years, we have already been working towards that goal. This is the article about Marie Curie in the Urdu Wikipedia. Most of what you see here is not actually maintained by the Urdu Wikipedia community. The info box on the side, the references at the bottom, the links to the other language versions, and the links to authority files at the bottom of the article. All of these are not maintained inside the Urdu Wikipedia but at the centralized place, Wikidata. Wikidata is an open knowledge graph maintained by the Wikimedia communities. It is used in a growing number of Wikipedias and more and more articles inside Wikipedia use it and many, many other places use Wikidata by now. It was launched in 2012 and provides linked open data and irreferenceable URIs on the topics relevant to Wikipedia and beyond. And it is fully multilingual. That means that there is only one knowledge base for all the different languages of Wikidata, not one entry per language, so, and like in the Wikipedias. So no matter if you're using Wikidata in English, or in Hindi, or in Hebrew, or in Arabic, or in German, or in any of the more than 400 languages Wikidata supports, you will always see the same content. And if someone edits it in German, 
the change will be immediately available in Hebrew on Wikidata because it's the same content. And it will be immediately available to the Urdu Wikipedia. In Wikidata, we also store the identifiers of the topics in Wikidata in many other catalogs, be it national libraries, archives, museums, other memory institutions, authority files. In fact, it turns Wikidata into a form of modern digital Rosetta Stone, where you can now walk from one knowledge base to another, with the difference that we don't offer only three representations, as Rosetta Stone did, but almost 6,000. So we're linking almost 6,000 catalogs to each other, so you can get this huge, large set of data from the web and connect it together. Wikidata has items describing more than 93 million topics, with more than 1 to 2 billion statements, connections between those topics, values of those topics, and so on. Wikidata has more than 26,500 monthly active contributors, which is large. <laughs> and they have performed so far almost 1.4 billion edits. In fact, last year, Wikidata became the first wiki ever to have crossed more than 1 billion edits, followed by the English Wikipedia earlier this year, just in time for Wikipedia's 20th anniversary. The number that surprised me the most? Wikidata offers a Sparkle input. Sparkle is a query language over RDF to which Wikidata exports its content. So that endpoint answers more than 15 million queries every day, and the endpoint is pretty amazing. So not only does it answer queries like these, you know, show me a map of all the conference locations of the web conference. So let's take a look. I'm sure for quite a few of you, these dots mean a lot of memories. There's the one in Seoul. There was a great conference there. Beijing, Hyderabad. Um, railing in the US, I remember that one well. Edinburgh, Edinburgh was my first up, up, up. Um, and now we're in Ljubljana. It's, um, so there's a lot of memories on these maps, probably for many of us. So this map is created with writing a sing without writing a single line of code. This is just a query to Wikidata. It gets the data from Wikidata, gets the coordinates, then gets the data from OpenStreetMaps to actually render the map. So we are federating knowledge across the web of linked open data. We can federate with other uh, Sparkle endpoints, with other um, data sets, and combine it all together. And what we see here is the direct unprocessed result from the Sparkle query engine. So we can take all this data together query it in complex ways, make beautiful renderings like a map, or for example, like this graph. This is the etymology of the English word water and related words that derive from the same root. The interesting part here is, this is not based on the ontological information about water, you know, about the water thing that, that becomes liquid at zero degrees Celsius, that is made up of hydrogen and oxygen and so on, but this is based on the lexicographical entities about the words describing water. In 2018, Wikidata was extended to be able to collect knowledge about all the words in all the languages. This is based on the Lemon ontology. And this will become important again in a few minutes. <clears throat> Here's an, one last example from the Sparkle endpoint. This is the academic genealogy of Marie Curie who supervised Curie's uh, PhD, who supervised her supervisor, etc. Visualized as an interactive graph with pictures pulled from Wikimedia Commons and rendered together in, an, in, uh, in this graph. So here again, we're pulling data from all kinds of different places and putting them together in one single visualization, which is such a sparkle query. And this is the same data that's coming here from Wikidata, and it is also used on the Urdu Wikipedia being displayed here, giving her supervisor with the Urdu um, transliteration of um, her supervisor's name. And the same also in the Welsh Wikipedia, in the Romanian article, and in Slovenian, in Belarusian, Greek, Czech, Azeri, even her native Polish uses data from Wikidata, and a growing number of other Wikipedia. Yes. So this is getting more uh, further and further. And this leads to an architecture where we maintain the data, the content, only once and reuse it across Wikipedia language editions, where we reduce the cost of creating and maintaining Wikipedia to an edition, as is the goal here. One example from last year 
India has a lot of languages, as you know, and there was a task force of Wikipedians who took up the work of putting the data about infections, vaccinations, etc., into Wikidata. And so that the number of COVID cases for in Kerala, for example, so this is the Canada article about COVID in Kerala, has been drawing its data actually from Wikidata. And so that the same data was also used in the Bengali Wikipedia, in the Punjabi, in the Malayalam Wikipedia, and in English and in other languages. So Wikidata allowed here to increase coverage of the data, to increase currency of the data and correctness in this critical time, because it's coming only from one place and has to be maintained only once, but used in all these different languages. So the solution seems simple, right? All we need to do is bring everything from Wikipedia to Wikidata and we're done. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. And here we come to the limits of what can be currently expressed in Wikidata. So there are three main topics that we identified that don't really work well in Wikidata. This is narration, reference by description, and redundancy. Let's go through each of them quickly. Narration. So this is a simple example. Um, let's read it out. It's from the, Mar it's from the Marie Curie article. In June 1903, Marie and Pierre Curie were invited to the Royal Institution in London to give a speech on radioactivity. Being a woman, she was prevented from speaking and Pierre Curie alone was allowed to. So the thing is, I can turn this into a lot of troubles. Well, I had to introduce a few new properties like forbids speaking because I didn't assume that beforehand. And I can store those in Wikidata. But how can I express the knowledge that allows me to cut out the right set of triples again? Remember, this is just a tiny fragment of more than a billion unordered edges in the knowledge graph. How to pick the right triples, phrase them in a text again, and in which order to, to, to tell the story, to make all of this editable, to be able to allow the community to decide how to put the order, how to put the emphasis and all these things on top of this knowledge graph. This work for generating text from data, but a sentence like the one given is in a way that can be controlled and edited by the community, we're still far away from that. We haven't figured that part out yet. Next thing, reference by description. How do we talk about things that do not have a Wikidata item? For example, the speech the Curies were invited to in 1903 at the Royal Institution. Well, it was pretty central to the little graph we had, but there isn't a Wikidata item for that. We can't actually reference the speech. OWL has something of a solution for that, but Wikidata doesn't have that. And we don't know how to actually make this available to a community and make it edible. There are tons of entities in Wikipedia that are created on the fly, are only referenced rarely, have weak identity conditions, and whose maintenance would quickly become a major headache. Another thing that Wikidata hasn't figured out yet. And redundancy. Let's. Let's look a little bit deeper into that one. So this one piece of knowledge, which is stated in the lead of every Wikipedia article about Marie Curie, if it has a longer article, be it in English, in German, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Arabic, all of them say this. Or if you don't speak Arabic, here it's in Russian, Spanish, Italian, German, Chinese, Korean. In Korean, it's like half of the lead. By the way, if you feel a bit lost right now because you still don't know what I'm talking about, that's how most, uh, how many people who don't speak English feel when they surf the web. So this is the information in English. Marie Curie is the only person to win the Nobel Prize in two different scientific fields. It's obviously an important fact. Why else would all these different contributors in all these different languages have independently written it into the lead of a high profile article and it remained in that lead for all these articles? But you know what? This information is completely redundant. Wikidata knows about every single Nobel Prize, who received them, when, in which field, etc. So this information is redundant compared to the complete ground data. And yet we want to make it explicit. It's in all these languages, written and maintained independently. It's important. Redundancy is important. Redundancy is what human language does again and again, and which makes these articles actually understandable. And it's not about capturing the formal semantics of that statement. We could do that in OWL. It would be something like that. But we wouldn't know how to turn that back into a comprehensible sentence. It really is about how to capture it in a notation 
that allow us to confidently display it in different languages. So here's our suggestion. And bear with me. The following is very, very hand wavy and probably doesn't work like this at all, but that's a sketch of where we want to go. So taking a sentence like this one, can we capture what it says in some way abstracting for natural language? So, and the idea that we have is basically, let's use something like frames. So we may have a frame for only person that, which has two slots. One is filled with Marie Curie, the other is with a condition, which is, well, winning an award, which is another, uh, which is another frame. Again, two slots, the award itself and its type, which is um, the, the type captures, you know, it has a category, two modifiers. They're saying they're different and scientific. I'm hand-waving here. What is important is, that we are not necessarily exactly capturing this sentence on the right. It could also be, you know, this sentence, the only one who ever won Nobel Prizes in two different sciences was Marie Curie. It doesn't really matter if it's um, this sentence, previous sentence. What is important, that the same notation can also be used for rendering a sentence in a different language with the same content, like here in Croatian. So what we need for that is a set of constructors, only person that award winning. We need to have the definition of the slots. Um, and th these constructors, they're, they're like types of the frames that we use. And then we need renderers for each constructor and for each language. So we would have one renderer constructor language, we would have one renderer in English for the only person that um, uh, constructor. And then we would have one for Croatian, we would have, have one for Amharic, for German, and so on. And they would be always used to actually render this. And the, here, those renders are far, uh, <laughs> enormously oversimplified. In reality, we need to do things like agreement in, in many languages and so on, which, are much, which makes it much more complex. Let's just stand here. So when this is the case, we have a uh, we have managed to represent abstract content, abstracting from the, net, from the concrete natural languages, in a way that can be rendered back to text in a concrete language using a renderer. So that, when we use a renderer for another language, we can use the same abstract content as a starting point, but creating a text in a different language, and then offering that to the Wikipedias who can choose to use it to fill their knowledge gaps. And because we are just a small team and we cannot create renderers for 300 languages, we crowdsource the creation of the renderers as well. We crowdsource the creation of the constructors in a new project called Wikifunctions. More about that in a bit. So now what we have is a system where each language needs one set of renderers, where each topic has only one content and not one article per language. And this is exactly the system that allows us to make the topics and the languages independent of each other. This way we separate the cost of the languages and the topics and thus reduce the cost of Wikipedia overall by the two promised orders of magnitude. And yes, the cost per language is now higher, but it still pales compared to the cost of creating all the relevant articles in 300 languages. So we are building towards that architecture. We already have some of the pieces in place. We have seen that the Wikipedias can already access the information about the items from Wikidata and display that. We have seen that in our examples. We have lexicographical knowledge in Wikidata about words since 2018. We've seen it with the water example. What we now have to add, what we are building now, is a Wikifunctions project where we will store the renderers, where we will store the constructors, and this in turn will allow us to store the content in Wikidata, pending a discussion with the Wikidata community if they actually want to have that. So this might change. So I promise a little bit more on the lexicographical knowledge in Wikidata. It stores knowledge about all the words in all the languages. Well, that's the goal. We are not there yet. It only started uh, two or three years ago. So here we see, for example, the entry for water, the English noun in uh, water, uh, which was used earlier in the graph together with the for the etymology. And because the forms in English are kind of boring, here's the example from Finnish. For a word like Vesi, meaning water, we would not store only the etymological information, information about the different senses the word may invoke, but also the information about the different forms the word can take. It's singular, it's plurals, the different cases, etc. 
And this can then be used to create a natural language text for the Wikipedias. So we built this large lexicographic knowledge base and we'll use this for the renderers in order to create a natural language text. And as I said, the knowledge is not complete in um, the lexicographic extension, but we already have covered, for example, in English for more than 88% compared to our corpus of Wikipedia, which is the interesting corpus for us because we're creating an encyclopedia. It looks much less rosy in other languages though. And this is something we really want to improve this year and are in crowdsourcing campaigns to, um, to, to gather an lexicographic knowledge from much more languages. So we are aiming for a system where content constructors, renderers can all be created and maintained by the community. But it is still possible to see an error and click on the edit button and fix the error, which makes certain applications of machine learning approaches challenging and why we plan to use symbolic approaches instead. And there we need to support graceful degradation that is missing a single form shouldn't block a whole article from being rendered. And whereas all of this sounds a little bit crazy maybe and very ambitious, there are also a few reasons for, for optimism. First, we are only about encyclopedic text. Uh, we don't want to cover, you know, lyrical text, poems, songs, heartbreaking literature and flaming manifestos. It's okay if we read a bit boring. Second, we don't need to understand language, merely generated, which is far, far easier. Third, our baseline is super low. I mean, you've seen the Marie Curie article in Amharic, it was one sentence. In Hausa, there's no article at all. And Hausa isn't a small language, it has 80 million native speakers. We can do a lot for knowledge equity for the speakers of those, of those languages, for the speakers of many languages. The whole thing has a very promising incentive infrastructure. We really hope to bring people to the Wikimedia projects who are currently not contributors, just as we did with Wikidata. And here's the important thing. This is not only for people to read in the language, but we can also have people contributing in Hausa, writing about their history in Nigeria and have that read in Bengali. We allow people to directly share knowledge in Hausa and be read by people in the Bengali language to allow everyone their share, to share their voice to the global knowledge commons. In getting closer to a world where everyone can share in the sum of our knowledge. But here's the thing. One reason why Wikipedia was such a big success was that everyone understands what an encyclopedia is. It was comparably easy to say, hey, here's a wiki, let's build an encyclopedia. But if you want to make a collaborative system about constructors, renderers, content, that sounds like a much harder sell. We, we don't expect to be able to grow a community like this. But if we squint a little, then constructors, look a lot like types in programming languages. Renderers look like functions and content, well, that's the values of those types. And suddenly, if we take that expanded look, we get a project with a far larger scope and a far larger potential community. That's wiki functions. That's what we're working on right now. Wiki functions is, the goal of Wikifunctions aims to be a comprehensive library of functions, a Wikipedia for algorithms, if you so want. We are launching later this year and it will be the first new Wikimedia approach since 2012 when Wikidata launched. It will be fully multi multilingual, both regarding natural as well as programming languages, and we'll get to this in a moment. So, so what's a function in the sense of Wikifunctions? And, well, that's a huge problem we are actually currently struggling with. How do you explain what a function is and why they are useful to someone who is not a mathematician or a computer scientist? Um, I, feel, I, I honestly believe they're super useful for everyone, but it's hard to explain that they are. If we say, well, a function is a mapping from elements in one set to the elements of another, that doesn't sell the whole thing. Um, if we say a function is something that takes an input x, runs some deterministic procedure over the inputs and returns an output f of x, well, maybe a bit better, but not really there yet. We need help with that. If you can help us, reach out, please. The important thing is functions are knowledge. And as such, they are part of the Wikimedia mission. The big companies know that functions are knowledge and they allow you to access a growing number of functions for the services. For example, Here's Siri. If you call Siri and ask it to turn two tablespoons to teaspoons, well, Siri calls the functions and tells us the result. 
here's Bing. If we ask, what's the deadline for the web conference 2021? And Bing, it's also it's a search engine. Instead of showing the search results, it actually runs a function over the knowledge graph, it's indexed, and returns you with an answer. So the deadline was October 19, 2020. Now, for example, if I go to DuckDuckGo, I can ask how many days, days since October 19, 2020, and it will answer with 164 days. This is not a search result. It's obviously not searching for how many days since October 19, 2020 on the web. It's actually understanding that you're asking this question. It's running a function. It's displaying you the result. Uh, it's not based on search result. Even though it's a search engine, it's actually providing you answers. Here's my favorite example. Go to Google and ask to calculate the volume of a pyramid. Google will produce this beautiful experience, showing you the sketch of a pyramid, highlighted while entering the values um, for the different arguments. It also shows you the formula uh, for calculating the volume, substitutes the, the arguments into the formula, and returns the results. This is totally a function application. And here's the thing. As soon as we move out of the experiences which are built for us by the companies, well, we get to 10 rulings. Here, for example, we ask for a map of all the institutions which papers accepted at the web conference. And well, Google shows us 10 rulings because that's not something it can do. Most of us would probably know how to code up a function to do that or have a student do it for them, you know, get the data from the web conference website, map the institution, so geo, geo coordinates, render it on a map. But for most people, that's well beyond their capabilities. Functions are knowledge, and knowledge is power. And in fact, functions are a superpower because they not only answer questions, they allow us to ask questions no one has ever asked before and to confidently generate answers for these questions. And these superpowers, we want to make them more accessible to more people. We want to democratize these superpowers. Here's a mock-up of how the landing page for wiki functions may look like. Some text, a function of the day, um, a category, categories for different functions. <laughs> Our logo is not fun, uh, finalized yet, so here's just a question mark for that. And bear with me, our designer hasn't started yet, so all these slides look terrible. Um, every function will have a page in wiki functions. So this, for example, is a convert function, which takes tablespoons and returns teaspoons. Or here's a function that takes two days and tells you how many days are between that. Let's take a closer look at one specific function. I, so something very simple. So this is the multiply function, and it works on positive integers, so it returns a positive integers. So we have the signature of the function, the arguments, the, and then we have a few different programming languages. And here we have two tests so running the three different implementations. And let's take a look, closer look at the individual implementation. So we have an implementation in JavaScript. Um, Nothing fancy happening here. It's using the JavaScript native multiplication and returning the result. So each implementation is on its own page. So we have here the implementation in JavaScript for the multiply function. Here's the one in Scheme. The same thing really it looks slightly different syntax, but otherwise the same thing. And here's the one uh, which we call composition. Now, composition is not a fancy new programming language you haven't heard about yet, but it describes the possibility in wiki functions of composing a function implementation from the functions and objects which are already defined in wiki functions. So in this case, we implement multiplication by recursively calling addition. No magic happening here. But here comes the interesting thing. Just as with wiki data, each page in wiki functions is really identified by a numeric identifier and has labels for natural languages. So we know that set3445 is actually called multiply in English. And all of the functions down here, if, a zero, add, etc., this is what we see here is just the English label, which means we can actually have the same view of the same thing in Bengali. We can just switch the language to something else. This implementation is now shown in Bengali. It's the same implementation, but you don't need to know English anymore in order to understand a function implementation or to write one. You can actually code and write in Bengali, in your native language, which takes away one of the major blockers from people accessing and creating functions. We can directly code in any of the 300 languages we will support. 
We really aim at radically democratizing access to code to allow many more people than today to use and write functions. We want to give to access to these functions through many different modalities. You can call those functions through apps, websites, smart speakers, inside of spreadsheets. We want to allow to use all these functions from many, many programming languages. In fact, you can regard this as a new powerful standard library that can be easily made available even in a brand new programming language. And you have a big uh, uh, library there and you can start kickstart your programming language. You can take the function implementations, compare them to existing code bases, find near clones, looking for errors, or use all of this as training data for function translation, like in the example that Evelyn was giving us in the first talk. So, um, and there are a lot of errors out there. If you look for GitHub, for example, the date comparison, half of the implementations in top 10 are broken and not taking, um, uh, they're not, uh, taking um, leap years into account properly. So this is, and most importantly, this is where we will be building a natural language generation library for more than 300 languages. That's our first application. That's why we're doing the, uh, the whole thing in the first place, but we will have many more goals in that. And yes, sure, it's a bit of a stretch to imagine how we get from a function converting tablespoons to teaspoons to a library which allows us to take abstract content and render it in 300 different languages. But that's how we start. And we learn how to build a system, build a community. So this year we want to launch Wiki Functions, polish it, get it up and running, grow a community, start working on it. So that next year we can start building the natural language generation libraries inside of Wiki Functions. And so that in 2023, we can generate text from abstract content and offer it to the Wikipedias that like it to close the knowledge gaps. So that we get to a place where more people can share in more knowledge, can share in more knowledge in more languages than ever before, getting a small step closer to a place with a bit more knowledge equity, a bit closer to a world where everyone can share in the sum of all knowledge. Thank you for your attention and uh, let's celebrate 20 years of Wikipedia and let's celebrate the 30th web conference that's starting now. <laughs>